Hello, uh, today I'm going to go over the instructions or directions for the Athenian Democracy Structured Academic Controversy. So I'm going to kind of give you some background and go over the directions for this assignment. So uh, starting in the 6th century BCE, um, Athens uh, kind of had a similar social situation going on to what we see in America today. Um, we have Athenians um, conf having a conflict with one another. Uh, it was between the rich Athenians who controlled the government and poor Athenians who were farmers and merchants. So we have a few rich people kind of controlling the rest of society. Um, you could argue we see a similar situation today in our country. However, in 508 BCE, a wealthy Athenian named Cleisthenes rose to power in Athens, and he introduced a system known as democracy. Democracy is a form of government where political power comes from the people. There's different forms of it, but again, the, the Greek word, uh, the Greek root is democrati, uh, democratia. Demo means the people and kratia means power or rule. Um, we see different forms of this. Uh, Athenian democracy was a direct democracy. This means that citizens uh, could directly vote on laws and government actions themselves. They didn't choose someone to do this. They did it themselves. Um, this is different from what we have in America. We have more of a representative democracy or a Republican form of government in which we choose people to uh, vote on laws for us or to, to make government actions for us. We don't get to make our own laws. We choose people to do it for us. If we like how they vote, we keep them in power. If we don't like how they vote, we vote for someone else next time. Um, so again, a little bit different than what we have in um, our society today. So in, in Athens, again, as being a direct democracy, they had uh, people, uh, they, they, they voted on laws themselves. They did not choose someone else to, to make decisions in the government for them. They did it themselves. And there was three branches of, of their democratic government. The first was the ecclesia or assembly. Um, they were Athens' main governing body, and they made the most important decisions, including voting on laws, deciding whether or not to go to war, and determining, uh, determining other foreign policy actions. Uh, any citizen could attend and vote in the ecclesia, which met 40 times a year. Uh, decisions just required a 40, uh, uh, or, I'm sorry, a simple majority to pass. Next, we have the boule, which is also known as the Council of 500. Um, it was 500 men, 50 from each of the 10 Athenian tribes. These men were chosen by lottery and served for one year. Uh, they made decisions about the day-to-day -day government actions, and they decided what issues should go in front of the ecclesia. So they were a little bit of a check there on the power of the ecclesia. They got to choose what what decisions went in front of them, um, and they all, but they also serve you know kind of day-to-day -day running of government, running of the city type of uh, decisions. And then finally, we have the the uh, casteria or the courts. Um, they were made up of five hundred men over thirty years old. They were also chosen by lottery, and they decided the legal cases by majority rule. There were no uh, Police or lawyers, they kind of um, they kind of you know were ser served as the judge, and they did not really rely on those institutions for power. Um, as far as, as far as like the police and lawyers, other Athenian citizens served in those roles instead of having police or lawyers. So again, we have we see heavy citizen involvement in the courts. So now that we've learned a little bit about um, the structure of the Athenian government, we're going to focus for the rest of this lesson on the central historical question. Was Athens truly democratic? So what we're going to do is you're going to read through several sources about this topic and eventually engage with your peers and uh, start a dialogue about this question. All right. So looking at the assignment, looks like this. And there's five documents. We have a speech from Pericles for document A. We have a portion of the Constitution of Athens for document B, and we have some statistics for document C. You and a partner are going to read through documents A, B, and C, and answer a couple questions from each document on the fourth slide of this assignment. Then you're going to read through documents D and E, and again, answer some questions on those documents uh, on this slide. So you're going to do that with your partner. Then I'm going to pair you up once you're finished with another group, and you are going to split into two sides. So you and your partner will be either team A or team B, and then the other set of partners will be the other letter. So uh, you could be team A, and the other two people will be team B, um, or vice versa. Um, with your group of four, you're going to look through the evidence, um, documents A through E, and you're going to look for... Uh, four positions or four pieces of evidence that supports your, your opinion. If you're team A, your opinion is that yes, ancient Athens was democratic, was truly democratic. 
If you're Team B, you're going to look for evidence that no, ancient Athens was not democratic. So you're going to look for your evidence, you're going to type it in, and then once both sides are finished, you're going to share out what your, your side found. Again, Team A, you're going to present your four points, four pieces of evidence quoted from the documents that Athens was democratic. For Team B, you're going to present four pieces of evidence that no, Athens was not democratic. Once both sides presents their evidence and they copy down the other side's evidence, that's important, make sure you copy down what your opponents say, um, you're going to have a small dialogue in which you discuss and come to a consensus as to what your, your group of four is going to, your, your group of four's opinion is going to be. You have to come to a consensus, a consensus agreement as to whether or not Athens was democratic. OK, so you, you, you have to come to a consensus. You cannot be yes and no or both sides. You must say yes or no. Yes, Athens was democratic or no, Athens was not democratic. OK, um, you know, maybe when you, we use a democratic vote, if there's if there's um, a simple disagreement between the four of you, but you must come to uh, an agreement. Uh, in, in your group. Once you come to an agreement, once you come to a consensus, you must answer the following uh, uh, components in your consensus dialogue with your group. So you must, again, you must say whether or not Athens was democratic. What does democracy mean in your own words? In what ways was Athens democratic? In what ways was Athens not democratic? And then how does the democracy in ancient Athens compare to uh, the democracy we see in our country today? So once you get these points addressed in your consensus, you can submit this assignment on Schoology. All right. So again, read through the documents with your partner. Then once you get paired up with another uh, set of partners, you're going to uh, look for evidence supporting your position, come to a consensus as a group of four, and then you're all going to write out your consensus on the last slide. Everyone must submit this assignment. You cannot have people uh, submitting multiple things. All right. So uh, good luck. and.